Something was very wrong. The ship was quiet and near motionless on the ocean waters, rocked by the choppy waves. For a freighter out on the water, it would be serene in a bizarre way. The ship wasn't the only thing that appeared to be still. Above the gunwale, not a single member of the ship's crew was seen moving. And for a ship of its size, carrying likely over 100 people, anyone would be apprehensive as to why things were so calm. Though calm the ship may have seemed, what had been transpiring aboard the ship was anything but. The crew were frozen in death, a swift rigor taking hold, not allowing their bodies enough respite to collapse. Expressions of horror were struck across their weathered faces. Even a dog stood rigid with a snarl fixed on his once friendly muzzle. But not all were dead. One still remained, a young telegraph operator who had managed to barricade himself in the wireless room, frantically typing out his SOS in hopes that someone would arrive to save him. Unfortunately for the operator, his last eerie message to his would-be saviors was, I die. And he, like the rest of the crew of the Orang Madan, succumbed to whatever horrific fate had taken his crewmates. This is the dark and mysterious fate of the SS Orang Madan. Special thanks to our sponsor of this video, Lightning Link Casino, for making this episode possible. In the words of the great philosopher Clint Eastwood, you've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do ya, punk? Well, whether you feel lucky or not, today's your lucky day, because Lightning Link Casino is the mobile game to play. With this kick-ass mobile game, you can play awesome animated slot machines for free online. So hit up the link in the description below or scan the QR code on screen to download while I tell you more. What I probably love most about this game, aside from the heavenly noise produced by the slot machines, is all the activity, combined with the impressive, colorful animations, and the variety in all the different slot machines just makes it even more awesome. And it's Lightning Link's third birthday. Those little slots grow up so fast. And they're celebrating with two weeks of awesome events, offers, and in-game gifts, with new slots being added all the time. And when you try out my sponsors, you directly help me make more content for all of you. So don't wait. Go to the link in the description below or scan the QR code on screen right now. All new players get 10 million coins. It's rare to meet such a generous set of slots. Thanks for listening and extra thanks to all of you who download Lightning Link Casino. Now, on to the episode. It was clear weather and calm seas that day in February 1948. The Straits of Malacca near Malaysia and Singapore were a popular shipping route, and it was there that the Dutch ship SS Orang Madan was making its way to its destination. What took place on board is still a mystery to this day. Ships in the Strait were startled to receive an SOS in Morse code that began, all officers, including the captain, are dead, lying in chart room and bridge, possibly whole crew dead. The message was followed by indecipherable code before the message concluded with, I die. This eerie communication left many baffled. No further contact was heard from the ship. Later, two American vessels passing through the strait responded to the distress call. The city of Baltimore and the Silver Star came upon the SS Orang Madan floating adrift. There was no one to be seen moving around on deck and all attempts at radio contact were met with an unnatural silence. The crew from the Silver Star decided the best thing they could do was to board the peculiar vessel to get a better picture of what was happening. When the men boarded, they would be met with nightmarish visions that they would never forget. 
When the investigating members of the Silver Star got aboard the Orang Madan, they were faced with a horrific scene. The corpses of the crew littered the deck, collapsed on their backs, and their faces contorted into wide-eyed expressions of terror. The captain's dog, frozen in place, appeared scared, though defensive and ready to attack to protect his master when his life was stolen as well. Eyeballs bulged from their sockets, mouths were wide open in silent screams, and arms were outstretched as if they had been fending off some unseen attacker. However, the bodies showed no signs of any blood or violence, and no wounds could be seen. The would-be rescuers found themselves on a floating morgue and with no explanation as to how or why. As they began exploring the ship, they encountered more bodies. In the wheelhouse, corpses were strewn about, with some officers lying across each other on the floor. They found the young operator still slumped at his desk in the wireless room where he had typed his final SOS. The engineering crew was also found at their stations with precisely the same expressions on their faces as well. Oddly, the bodies appeared to be in advanced states of decay, the corpses putrefying much faster than they should have been. While searching aboard the vessel, the rescue party reported an eerie chill despite the warm local temperatures. The ship itself seemed intact and no obvious damage was reported. Frightened, the crew of the Silver Star returned to their ship and decided to tow the Orang Madan to the nearest port for investigation and salvage. Once the ships were tethered together, smoke began to billow out from below decks. It appeared to be coming from the number four cargo hold. The crew of the Silver Star rushed to cut the tether and within seconds of freeing themselves from the strange ship, the Orang Madan exploded with such force that it lifted out of the water before sinking to the sea floor, taking its crew and the secret of their deaths with it. The story of the Orang Madan was published first in a Dutch-Indonesian newspaper in 1948. In two of the articles, it references the experiences of a sole survivor of the crew. The unnamed German man was found by an Italian missionary and natives on Tongi Atoll in the Marshall Islands. The man told the missionary that the ship was carrying a badly stowed cargo of sulfuric acid. He went on to say that fumes escaping from broken containers had killed the crew. According to the story, the Orang Madan was sailing from a small Chinese port to Costa Rica and deliberately avoided the authorities. The survivor died after telling his story to the missionary, who went on to tell the story to the author of the articles, Silvio Shirley. The tale was quickly picked up by other newspapers Articles spread from England to Canada, and then appeared in papers all across the United States. Readers were immediately enthralled with the story of the Orang Madan. From the tales of this puzzling ship arose theories of just what had taken place that day aboard the Orang Madan. The most prevalent of theories is that the ship was involved in smuggling operations from China, more specifically Unit 731. The unit was a secret biological and chemical warfare research facility run by the Imperial Japanese Army in World War II. They are known to have undertaken lethal human experiments and are responsible for some of the most notorious war crimes perpetrated by Japan. The researchers involved in Unit 731 were secretly given immunity by the United States in exchange for the data they gathered through human experimentation. Many people speculated that the Orang Madan was carrying chemical substances such as potassium cyanide, nitroglycerin, or even stocks of nerve agents. No U.S. ship could transport the stores as it would leave a paper trail. It was therefore loaded onto a non-registered ship for transport. 
It's believed that seawater could have entered the ship's hold, reacting with the cargo to release toxic gases, which then caused the crew to succumb to asphyxia and or poisoning. Later, the seawater would have reacted with the nitroglycerin, causing the reported fire and explosion. Another common theory is that of carbon monoxide poisoning. The rescue crew of the Silver Star had said that the boiler was still running when they came aboard the Orang Madan. It's possible that an undetected fire or malfunction in the boiler room could have caused a buildup of carbon monoxide, killing the crew without leaving any evidence behind. With the fire slowly spreading out of control, this could have led to the eventual explosion that sank the ship. Others theorize noxious gas bubbled up from fissures in the seabed and engulfed the boat, while some have held firmly to the belief that the crew was killed by something otherworldly, perhaps even an entity of some kind. After all, many mysterious and unexplainable events have happened far from land, with some such accounts being told by seasoned veterans of the ocean who weren't known by any who knew them for telling tall tales or even believing in such phenomena to begin with. Despite the articles and rumors of the Orang Madan's case, many doubt the validity of the tale. Researchers were unable to find any mention in shipping registers not only of the incident, but also of any ship bearing the name Orang Madan. The logs of the Silver Star also did not make mention of any such rescue attempt. Skeptics have claimed that the events might have been inaccurate, exaggerated, or that the story itself might be completely false. With the death of the sole survivor and no wreckage having been discovered, an investigation into the facts of the case has been all but impossible. But if something nefarious was underway with the Orang Madan, the implications of which could have caused a substantial amount of trouble for one or more governments, it wouldn't be impossible for officials to have had records of the Orang Madan and its rescue scrubbed, and even having those who witnessed it threatened to keep quiet or silenced in other ways. In regards to the ship's wreckage not being discovered or recovered, all we know is that the wreckage hasn't officially been discovered. But if governments did truly wish to keep the case of the Orang Madan as quiet as possible, they could have potentially brought up what they could have whenever it had been possible to do so, and just not kept a record of it. Or they could have spread misinformation as to where the Orang Madan sank to begin with. It tends to be that keeping secrets and outright lying go hand in hand in regards to government corruption. And this is hardly a new concept, is it? In 2013, a document about the Orang Madan was mentioned in a letter by C.H. Mark Jr., assistant to the director of the CIA, Alan Dulles, in 1959 and was addressed to an unknown recipient. He wrote to the individual, speculations of secrets in the area of the Strait of Malacca, I feel sure that the SS Orang Madan holds the answer to many of these airplane accidents and unsolved mysteries of the sea, he said. He then went on to make reference to fiery spheres of destruction mentioned in Old English Chronicles. The spheres were seen by captains and crews having risen and fallen back into the sea. Mark concluded the letter with, the enchanting sea, what terrifying secret does it hold? I feel sure that the SS Orang Madan also holds the answer to this secret. The recipient of this letter is still redacted to this day, and further mentions of the Orang Madan have not been found in other declassified documents. It's possible that much more is known of the story but it's still considered top secret, and therefore we are likely to never truly know 
what happened. It's been more than 70 years since the alleged sinking of the Orang Madan. The time has only increased the enigma of that ominous day where the horrific state of the crew was found floating adrift. Whether covert operation, simple malfunction, or a tall tale of the sea, the mystery of the Orang Madan persists to this day and leaves us wondering what truly happened to those aboard, if they even existed at all. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to check out our sponsor, Lightning Link Casino, linked in the description below. When you use our sponsors, they're more likely to come back for more business, which means more content for all of you. So thank you so much to all of you who do that. My team and myself all appreciate it immensely. And of course, be sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications now, because you won't want to miss what's next. And I'll see you next time.